Our most valuable resource is not time or money, but attention. And I've been fascinated with that topic. I've read multiple books, taken lots of courses, meditated for over two decades or so, and even written books about it. But only now I managed to achieve some kind of present state that has been quite sustainable. And there was a couple of unlocks that led me to finally get it that I believe can achieve by everyone. The first one was that attention is not an infinite state. It is a zero state. Think of it as a pile of rice and then imagine that all the thoughts you have, all the domains has their own amount of rice in it. You've probably heard this talk of we are so scatterbrained nowadays and this is how it looks like. But if you slowly but surely make sure to bookmark all these domains so we don't have it all the time, just like tabs on the computer, then we got more and more rice grains, more and more attention to what really matters right now. It's like the sun is scatter across the entire sky but if you put a magnifying glass on it and put the object behind it then you will see it has a lot of power a lot of potency so just as when it comes to time management and you want your calendar as empty as possible full attention is the same here nothing else to think about nothing else to worry about aside from what you see and hear and feel right now but here's the second unlock because it's quite counterintuitive how to get there and to illustrate my point try to not think of a pink elephant you see, that was kind of impossible. As soon as I thought of pink elephant, the thought pink elephant come up and then you thought, okay, I'm not going to think about the pink elephant. But no, I actually thought of pink elephant. The round and round it goes. And that's the same with thoughts too that we do not like, that we are dissatisfied with the fact that they pop up. But the fact that we're dissatisfied makes them fueled even more. So the counterintuitive way in order to get rid of those thoughts is to try to not get rid of them. Accept that they are there and a part of the human condition. And the framework that really fascinated me for the last couple of days or so is this concept of bad labeling versus good labeling. Most often, at least when it comes to my thoughts, it's often attached to bad label. What could happen to my day job? What could happen tomorrow? What am I going to do next? How am I the most productive? Why am I not the most productive and so forth? There are all these questions and all these worst case scenarios just looping around in the back as some kind of a virus who tries to slow down the computer. But if I say to myself that all this is not something to get rid of, they are just a part of me and I can accept that. Then all of a sudden I've attached a good label to it. I don't find it as a problem and because I don't find it as a problem it is no longer a problem. And this could apply to many things like for instance tensions, particular situation, a particular delay and so forth that as soon as I don't feel there's a problem anymore it feels like I'm sort of waking up from a dream that I'm going up in perspective and see what really matters. But in order to get that it's important to recognize that we have thoughts in the first place. I don't think that most people even know that they are more or less run by their thoughts. I certainly wasn't that back in 2018 but I had a history of autism etc which is kind of this extreme level of being in own bubble and so forth. So one thing that has helped me in the beginning is to write down exactly what's going on. If I think of, for example, oh no, what's going to happen today? I'm late. It's very cold today. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get all the things I want to do on time. Then I write exactly what I just said. And that's this basic of cognitive behavior therapy that once you write down these automatic thoughts as they call them, then it's much easier to deal with them in a more responsible manner. Since I realized it, I haven't really been run by negative thoughts as much anymore. Of course, you dig up a lot of negative thoughts that you previously did not have, but then you can shake it off again and shake it off again and so forth. And it goes higher and higher from there. But there's not only negative thoughts thoughts. It could be two other kinds of thoughts too. The first one is more fast forward mentality that I want what I'm doing right now to end as soon as possible so that I can get on to the next thing and then to the next thing and so forth. You probably experienced it. And the final type is a more searching mentality in which we're not satisfied. We want something else. We don't know where it is so therefore we label the entire situation as a problem. The next thing when it comes to this fast forward 
forward mentality, as I call it, is to do the opposite again, slowing down. And that's actually been my number one solution to stress, no joke. I even found that my sleep has been deeper than ever since I'm not trying to rush things. For example, right now when I'm talking to you, I don't try to rush my words anymore. Appreciating the moment of just sitting here, talking to the amazing you and having a blast while doing it. And that's the same with writing too. Once I realized that as long as I don't do anything else, but can have the option to sit there and do nothing and be absolutely okay with doing nothing. Then I got into this magical flow state where you just thumbs are just tapping all along or keyboards for just hammering with my hands and so forth. Especially when I'm really mindful how I want to construct these sentences, I found this particularly helpful to take some pauses and be okay with taking pauses. And ironically, once I feel very okay with taking pauses, then it's so much easier to not take pauses, but I just said going around, going forward. But the biggest level ups have come during those times I've let go of one level in order to gain control of another. A very classic example is in business. In the beginning, when you're starting out an entrepreneur, you want to wear multiple hats. You want to do sales, you want to do product, you want to do accounting, you want to do marketing, you want to do all kinds of things. But you can only go so far. I mean, we only have 24 hours a day. So therefore we hire people. We hire teams and those teams hire teams. And thus we scale and scale ourselves because we let go of the activities we need to do, but instead let others do them. And that's the same with attention too. It's all about scaling ourselves by one, ending those activities, ending those thought patterns, but two, also attach a good label to something that we find not so good. Having the same response, no matter how higher and higher the waves go, if you take a surf analogy, then we are more and more proficient. We are scaled, quote at that. So how does it relate to the searching thing, you might ask? The way to stop search is to let go of search. Realize that there is, once again, no need to search for anything else that we have right now. And realize that this peace of mind state that we are looking for is not necessarily a destination, but more an alignment between our expectation and what has been really presented by us at this moment. Having this trust as well, that if you're maximally awake, the solution will naturally come by itself. And that brings us to the ultimate part when it comes to attention. That's the word called surrender. I've been listening to the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle about eight to 10 times. What he calls surrender is not necessarily the submission, giving up thing. It's more of a case of what I talked about earlier, letting go in order to gain control. And one particular line that is said there is that full attention is full acceptance is surrender. Once we realize that we no longer need to change something that we can just accept as it is, as counterintuitive as it might sound, I know, we get more attention. We are not fighting with the reality, but instead fully embracing it. And thus we get back to this. We see things that we haven't seen before and so forth. As I pointed out in earlier video, if you have higher and higher attention, you have this power to do this snap decisions, they snap judgment and feel like, okay, this is the one, more gut feeling, more this training out this intuition. Those take seconds to do, but that ended up to be the best thing for that particular time and so forth and learning from that. And the very last thing, for the last couple of months or so, when I've been doing the videos and so forth, trying to speak without a script, I was looking into what am I going to say next? That particular word wasn't pronounced properly and I can't, to have these pauses and so forth and I got stuck. And I believe that's the same in writing too when we are trying to correct ourselves when we haven't even formed the initial ideas. And that's not only writing, that's not only videos, that's also recording music. I found that I'm much better playing while not recording. So what I did during that particular moment is to let go even there, being a more observer state. We are observing ourselves playing, observing ourselves speaking, observing ourselves writing 
but not trying to necessarily interfere with it. More in the case of facilitating this natural instinct to express ourselves coming next. And I know it sounds very esoteric right now, but that's probably the best way I can put it. And of course, if you find yourself to be having these creative moments, I think you know exactly what I mean. There's a lot of talk about this muse and having this creative inspiration. I think they all point to the same figure that everything just happens to fall in place once we let go of this micromanaging thing. That's something I'm really looking forward to see how you come up with in the comments and so if that's what particularly helpful for you, you and only you is something that I want to pay the most attention to in the most 20 plus years or so. I see in this video right here when we talk more about not wasting time and so forth, and always remember that you're the most amazing being alive.